Welcome to Pub Talk, the unofficial official craft beer podcast of Oklahoma, where we're all about the three B's, beer buddies and bullshit. I'm Jeremy, your legendary host, and I'm joined as always by my friend who sees no harm in a trip to the farm, Michael. Hello, hello. Today we have the pleasure of coming to you from Kellyville, Oklahoma, the home of Prairie Creek Farms, and the reason we're here, Rapture Brewing. <clears throat> Today we will sit down and talk all things Rapture, tell you where you can find their delicious beers and some, and some cool events they have coming up, including their official launch party. If you like what you hear today, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Check out our back catalog of Spotlight episodes on our website, pubtalkpodcast.com. All right, let's get into it. So, first of all, thanks for having us. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for coming out. Um, I'd just like to start these off with just let you introduce yourself and who you are, what you do. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my name is Mitch Holt, um, co-owner and head brewer of Rapture Brew. Uh, we've been open for getting close to three months now. Um, so it's just like just our little spot. Uh, we're having a good time. It's a lot of work. A lot more work than I thought it was going to be, but that's all right. Because <laughs> we're here. That's all that matters. But Absolutely. So I guess um, the first thing we'll do, we've got delicious beer in front of us. Um, you want to tell us about what we're drinking? Yeah, for sure. So this is um, this is our newest beer that we're releasing. We're actually going to be like unveiling it. Well, we're unveiling it right now, I guess. <laughs> but um, at our launch party at McNally's on the 15th of August, which is this upcoming Thursday. Um, it, this is called Peaches of Promise. Um, it's a it's basically our like house sour beer. Um, Call it sour soul, but I dose it with peaches. Um, and I, uh, the reason why it's called Peaches of Promise is because I'm uh, raising money for an organization called Pencils of Promise, and um, so the pers- the proceeds from this beer go to Pencils of Promise. So that's why it's called Peaches of Promise. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it is very tasty. Yes, yeah, awesome. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, thank you. Really yeah, light and super yeah. light. Um, I just I was telling. The boys, I call you the boys. Earlier, um, I love to brew beers that are pretty light and easy drinking. Um, our IPAs can kind of get up there in the ABV strength wise, but um, like this beer is four point eight percent. If I could just brew four percent beers every day, I would. Be nice. <laughs> I, love, I love low ABV beers that I can just you know crush all day yeah, and not yeah. think twice about it. Exactly. Yeah. No, that, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> We also typically start off the episodes a little bit about the history of the brewery, yeah, sure. and the name is always one that really, really interested in. How did you come up with Rapture? Yeah, so um, if my partners listen to this, they're probably not going to love it, but <laughs> 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 there's a lot of different uh, reasons why um, I went with the name Rapture, but, um, you know, Rapture is just a really cool word that means, like, like awesome or, you know, just taken over and delight or whatever it is. Well, that's what they say anyways. Um <laughs> But I, uh, I actually, you know, we're in Tulsa, we're in Kellyville, but I grew up in Tulsa. Right on. And so, you know, obviously this is like the heart of the Bible Belt. And um, I grew up in church. I'm still like really involved in my church. And so like Rapture has always been something that's like been in my life and like talking about it. It's like a concept that's just really interesting to me. And I just love the name. And right I just thought it'd be really cool to name a brewery Rapture. So yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons. <laughs> now I'm curious about the others. We can talk about that. We can talk about yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. um, so while we're kind of talking about the beginnings and stuff like that, yeah. we always like to ask everybody if you remember your first craft beer, uh, like your yes. epiphany craft yes. beer, where you, you went, ah, no more of that other stuff. Yeah, no, for sure. So the first craft beer I ever had was um, Sam Adams. Cherry wheat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, right on. I just remember like hanging out with a buddy of mine. His name is Mitch as well, and he like brought a six pack of cherry wheat, and we just were playing Madden all night long, <laughs> and nice. it was just one of the best nights ever because we always this is getting way too, but we'd always do like a franchise mode, and, like do a whole different draft, so we like draft our entire teams, and we literally stayed up for twenty four hours and played that game and drank cherry wheat. Obviously. More than just a six pack of that. But, yeah. <laughs> that's what happens. But yeah, so cherry wheat, and then the first beer that like really made me love craft beer was um, Prairie's Wine Barrel Noir. 
Okay. And it was uh, it was whenever they were doing the 750 bottles, the cork and cage ones. Um, I had that beer, and it just blew my mind. I was like, "This is insane!" Like they aged a stout in a wine barrel. Yeah. <laughs> it tastes so good. And so, and I was also playing Madden at the time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, yeah, I love I love that beer. That beer is awesome. I still love that beer. Um, I had one the other day that was from that first batch, and it was just like chocolate covered cherries. Nice. It was absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, very good. Oh yeah. So, what got you into to brewing? How long have you been doing it too? Um, I've been like home brewing about about seven years at this point. Right on. Um, well, now I guess I don't home brew anymore. But well, I do. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, I've been brewing for about seven years. Cool. Uh, it's the same buddy that showed me uh, cherry wheat. Oh, nice. He was like. Dude, you should brew beer because uh, it's pretty cool. And he, the way that I am, if I get involved with a hobby, I just go hard in the paint. Gotcha. And I get really, really into it, obviously. <laughs> um, and so he knew that as soon as he got me into brewing, that I would just obsess over it and it would just become like my thing. Awesome. So yeah, it was it was all him, all Mitch Mitch Williams. That's his name. Um, so yeah, that's that's how I got into home brewing and and. After we brewed our first batch, we went to High Gravity and got um, our first kit. Shout out to High Gravity. And um, we brewed a stout, um, and we added cacao nibs and coffee. And it, at the time, I was like, this is amazing. This is so good. Um, I'm sure it wasn't that good, but you know, there's something about making your own beer, like whether it's yeah. cooking or brewing beer or something, it's like, it just tastes so much better when you do it yourself. Right. And, uh, and so, yeah, that was, that was what got me into it. And after that, I just started reading books and watching videos and yeah, I just, I got way too into it. And now I started Rapture. So sweet. <laughs> yeah. So we know you like the lighter, uh, beers, the lower yeah. ABV, but do you have a specific style that's your, your favorite? Yeah, I'd say Saison is my favorite. Okay. Uh, it's my favorite beer to brew, like, style to brew, just because it's it's such a diverse style. You, you know, you can have two Saisons from different breweries, and they can be completely different beers yeah. in so many different ways. So Saison is something that I really want to do here. Um, like, we have a couple Saisons that I've been kind of putting out. It's been at a couple bars around town. Um, so, yeah, Saison is my favorite, and I love hoppy beers. So, um yeah, like IPAs and stuff like that. Like those, those are like my favorite styles. But we'll get into a lot of like sour, like we do some sour beers. Um, so we'll get into like the some wild ales and start doing like some uh, natural yeast, you know, beers and uh, like open fermentation. Um, and we'll get into stouts as well because I do like enjoy, I enjoy brewing stouts, but you know, saison and IPA are my favorite styles. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Will those be the ones that your brewery mainly focuses on, or they're yeah, most likely, because okay. uh, we, we want to create an environment here at the farm, because we're going to have a tap room, um, and I'll show you guys here in a bit, I don't know if we'll capture it on video, but, uh, <laughs> but we're going to create a large facility um, out that way, this means nothing to you listening or watching the video, <laughs> but I'm right. going to say, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and so yeah, we're going to be mainly focusing on like farmhouse style beers, cool. and like just... Uh, make it an event for people that want to come out and just hang out all day um, and just bring the bring the fam, play cornhole, you know, just chill. Awesome. Chill and have a good time. So, yeah. Right on. So, we're on a farm. Yes. <laughs> um, Got to say, it's the first time I've been to a brewery on a farm. Yeah. So, um, are there any like, unique challenges or benefits of being on a farm versus in a the Pearl District or wherever. Yes, um, this could get me in trouble, but <laughs> I feel like the county. If if you work for Creek County, don't listen to this. <laughs> I felt like the county was real chill, like way too chill about us starting because they like they can't. I don't know. <laughs> Let's just say it was more relaxed than I thought it would be. And then I think it would be whenever if we were to like open a spot on Cherry Street or downtown or something. I feel like it would be really intense. Here it wasn't that intense, but also our facility is so tiny yeah. that I think like they came out and they were just like, "Oh, this is it. All right, yeah, whatever." <laughs> uh, but whenever we do our large building, I think it's going to be a little bit more intense. Okay. But the process 
was a pain, like an absolute pain, um, like all the paperwork and everything like that. But um, but yeah, I feel like being out here it was a little bit more chill. Okay. Than, than it could have been. Okay. Cool. But, but there are other obstacles that we have to like figure out, like wastewater and stuff like that. Oh, okay. um, and that that was something that I didn't really ever think about wastewater, like because you know my background is home brewing, and so like. I would just pour water, like wastewater, Coming in the down. grass and yeah. just think twice about it. Yeah. But now it's like we actually have to haul it off. Gotcha. And I use so much more wastewater than I ever thought I would. Like it's it's kind of insane. So if like there's anybody out there that's starting a brewery, take into account wastewater. <laughs> <laughs> I did not, and I wish that I would have. But yeah. Right. So whenever we do our big building, we'll know. Yeah. <laughs> we'll know what to look out for. So how did the collaboration come about between, with Rapture and Prairie Creek Farms? So um, the people that run Prairie Creek Farms are also partners in the, in the brewery. Okay. Um, Jason um, has is like my, the main person with me in Rapture. We both are like the primary shareholders. shareholders. <laughs> um, and me and him have been friends since like high school. I think I was probably a freshman. Um, he's a year older than me, and uh, and so we we were friends in high school. And he was since he was a year older than me, he could drive before any of us could, gotcha. and so we would always you know roll out with him. It was like so much fun; just gave us so much freedom um, growing up in Tulsa. But uh, so Jason and I have been friends for a really long time, and we got to know each other through the years. And then we ended up going to college together and living together in college, and just like became really close. And so. That's how I got to know Jason, um, through growing up. And then the other guys um, I met through college. Um, and that's how they met Jason as well. And so now we're just three bro- or four bros hanging out. And so they started the farm um, whenever Nate, Nate and Peter, they just basically started it from their garage, like getting chickens and starting to raise them. And then they ended up getting like a little small farm where they had pigs and stuff like that. And then... They asked Jason if he'd be interested in, in joining them. I think I'm probably butchering this story, but they get over it. Um, and then Jason's really interested in, in joining the farm, and then they bought this 80 acre farm in Kellyville, and they just kind of hit the ground running. Like they're expanding like crazy. Everything's going really well. Um, if you're ever out at McNelly's or at any of the McNelly's group restaurants, Fassler Hall, anything like that, that you'll see Prairie Creek Farms stuff there. Okay. Um, like a lot of the local restaurants really love them. And so it's been nice for me because they hit me up one time. I say they hit me up. We went to Fassler Hall and we were just having a beer and some brats. And they were like, this is two years ago. They're like, do you have any interest in like, doing a brewery? I was like, uh, yeah, it's only like my biggest dream. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and so then we, we started like talking about it more and I came out to the farm and checked it out. It was like right... Around the time that they like first bought this farm and um, built the shop out there and, and all that, and so um, and so then I started looking. At it, I was like, "Man, this is this farm is beautiful. Like it's incredible. Um, I would absolutely love it." And so we started talking about it more. And two years later, we we're now here. And so it was a long, long process of, of doing everything, but but yeah, we're finally doing it. Finally doing it. I never really thought it was going to be real, but, <laughs> but it, it is. So we've uh, moved on to a second beer, uh, an IPA. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, for sure. So this is Make It Snappy. Um, it is an IPA that I brew with Amarillo and Hallertau Blanc hops, mainly Hallertau Blanc. I love that hop. Um, 6.8 ABV. And I, it's not like, it's not very bitter. I, you know, this is like the New England style IPA, yeah. so it's like more of a juice bomb than anything else. but. Um, also, like some of those other hops, like Mosaic and Citra and all that jazz, man, they can be so expensive. Gotcha. So there will be a time where I just go ahead and bite the bullet and get some of that. But it's also fun to experiment with other hops. Yeah. You know? yeah. And Hallertau Blanc has always been one of my favorite hops um, that I used when I was home brewing and stuff. So it's one that I wanted to like utilize a lot. It's pretty cheap. Awesome. Um, and so yeah, that's, that's why I love this beer. I think it's really good. And 
And this is and this is actually batch two that we're drinking. I brewed it. I brewed it three, three and a half, four weeks ago, something like that. Um, so it's still relatively fresh. Um, and I like it. Can, canned it yesterday. So, yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I'm glad you like so it. So good. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. That's as articulate as I can get. It's yeah. awesome. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> one awesome. word. Hey, I like it. I like it. Yeah, we, uh, we sell at the farmer's market on Cherry Street in Tulsa. And so this is a beer, uh, this is a can that I sold um, that I sold yesterday. Oh, so I canned it Friday, sorry, okay. I lied. Oh, wow. um, but we sold it yes yesterday at the farmer's market. It was exhausting, but I sold it anyways. I um, mean, I had a couple cans left over, so I had made sure and saved it for you. Awesome, thank so, you, appreciate so it. Yeah. That's special. <laughs> we do, <laughs> we do, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And if you are interested in trying this beer, we have it on tap at Fassler Hall and Cirque Coffee and I think that's it. No, no, Fuel 66, I forgot about that. Oh. Um, and I also, I'll have this one next week at the farmer's market as well. It'll probably be like the last keg that we have of it. Okay. But yeah, so if you're interested, hit me up. Speaking of the farmer's market, uh, how, how's that been? You know, I've, you've been selling your beer out there for a few months. Um, just curious how it's been going, and yep. I hear we've got some changes in store at the farmer's market too. So Yes, we do indeed. Um, the farmer's market has been cool. I mean, there are some really amazing people um, run it and, and work it, so it's been really good to like, get to know a lot of them. Um, sales have been like better than I thought they would be. Like, honestly, keep selling out. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> Those are always great days, yeah. <laughs> but they're great, but they're not so great because then I don't get to take many home. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but that's all right. Um, I'm sure my my wife loves that because our fridge is then not full of crawlers. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so the forest market's been really great. Um, we're having a good time with it. The only thing that's not fun is showing up at six fifteen or six twenty in the morning yeah. on a Saturday. But you know what can you do? That's all right. Um, but yeah, I mean, just the people that are involved with it make it worth it, in my opinion. Um, cool. And I know American Solera does does the farmers market as well, so yeah. it's, it's kind of cool getting to talk to them, you know, every day and, and seeing how things are going with them. So yeah, it's been it's been good. I really enjoy it. Cool. And are, so that runs through what October? October, yeah. Okay, and then I guess they're moving somewhere else next year. Yes. Yeah, so apparently, there's um, a lot of construction that's going to go on Cherry yeah. Street, which yeah. is so exciting to think about. Ugh. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so they're, we're going to have to move the farmers market um, the next year for sure, but maybe um, two years. Oh wow! Oh, wow! Yeah. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but oh well. Well, I, I think I saw that online somewhere. Yeah. So, yeah. So we'll see how that goes, but I know there are. Three um, places in particular that they're that they're looking at moving to, okay. um, just in the meantime. But we'll see how it all shakes out. I, I think it'll be good. I mean, the places that they that they talked about would be really good, and they're semi close to my house, so that's okay. Key. Cool. Right on. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. So uh, in the meantime, you know, I guess November through what well, is it April or whatever it starts back up. Um, where can people find your beer? So we're um, we are trying not to stretch up, stress ourselves too thin because we do operate a pretty small system. Um, but right now we're on tap at McNelly's. Um, they have our beautiful little pool, which is a hibiscus saison, and we're doing that launch party on Thursday. Um, right on. And we're going to do a pint night on the twenty sixth. Okay. Um, so I'll show you. I'll give you guys a sneak peek of the glass. It's oh, pretty nice. dope. Sweet. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and. Uh, so we're there. Um, Roosevelt's is about to put us on tap. I know I saw on their little digital pour thing that we're on deck. Ah, oh, uh-huh. sweet. Um, so they have a keg of Make It Snappy, and they have a keg of this beer that we're currently drinking. What's um, that? This side of Paradise, <laughs> which is a guava IPA. Um, so let's all take a quick sip. Let's do it. So fruity and delicious. It is refreshing. Yep. Well. Um, yes, it's very refreshing. So they'll, they're putting this on tap as well, and that will be the last keg of this iteration um, in the wild. Um, and we are on at Fuel sixty six. They they have been great supporters of us um, because our farm um, has a really good relationship with one of the owners um, okay. who, who runs a food truck and, and owns that and stuff. So. 
Um, they're really cool about um, about getting our beers on tap and pushing us. Like they've been great. And uh, we're on at Cirque, they, another place that's been really great to work with. And uh, where else? Where else? Did I say? Oh, and Fassler. Yeah, yeah Fassler. Yeah. Yes, and they have our uh, Make It Snappy on tap right now. So oh. whenever Farmer's Market ends, we will you know, start focusing more on our distro. Okay. Um, I'm hopefully going to have like a nice little backlog of beers that we can, we can send out um, and keep some money rolling in so we can for six seven. Sure. Yeah. Um, and we are also talking about opening um, a really small bar outside of this building, like literally in the middle of these two buildings. Oh, nice. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of talk to you guys like about that off camera. Cool. But, um, cool. We have something in the works where we want to like just have a really small spot and we're about to start getting into bottling. Okay. So sell bottles out of there and do like some bottle releases. Yeah, people come out to the farm and hang out, and it would be like something outside covered, obviously. Um, but yeah, something just real chill. It'd be it'd be really cool. And unlike anything that's really in Oklahoma right now. Right. Um, but that'll be in, in the meantime. Whenever farmers market's not going. Right? Okay. Cool. So, yeah. yeah. Are you excited? It's really cool that people can find you in that many places on tap. I mean, yeah. We yeah, talked to a lot of breweries that are just coming up that. They don't have that availability, so it's awesome that you're able to get that. Honestly, it's because of the farm. Oh, okay. Um, it's because of Prairie Creek Farms. They've created amazing relationships with, with a lot of restaurants around town. Okay. And, and, yeah, I mean, if it weren't for them, it would probably be a lot more difficult for us. So, shout out to those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask earlier when we were talking about the farm aspect, and I, one of our recent episodes we talked to somebody about, like, the fruit that they put in their beer and mm. how expensive it is. Are there any plans down the road to grow some of that stuff here on the farm? Yes. So um, we are planning on doing a, a, a hop, like a few acres of hops. Okay. Um, I was going to say a hop farm, but not necessarily a hop farm. Uh, but yeah, so we'll have, I think we're planning on doing three acres of okay. hops. And so and we've talked to Chase at American Slayer, and he was, um, he was like, uh, yeah, if you do hops, I will definitely buy some. Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> but obviously, if we have a really good yield, I mean, we're going to reach out to a lot of the local breweries and see if like they would want to do like some wet hot beers because those are the new hotness. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's something that we really want to do down the road. But that, I mean, that won't be. Uh, we won't have a good yield for the first year for sure because hops take at least a year to gotcha. really, you know, blossom for lack of a better term. Um, but yes, I don't know if you guys noticed whenever you drove in, but there were some like tiny little baby trees. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Those, so those are peach trees, pear trees, and plum trees. Oh, okay, awesome. Oh, yeah. um, awesome. So we we are planning on doing like some like fruited stuff whenever it comes to that. Um, that will be down the road as well, um, and it will probably be like really small batch stuff. Okay, and that would be like bottle releases that we would do here. Oh, that's so, right. You know, yeah. So like all farm, you know. Yeah. 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 That's, that's legit. That's very cool. Uh, so we we've, we've alluded to it a few times. Launch party Thursday night at McNelly's. Yes. Uh, what all is going to be going on? So we're going to have three beers on tap right now. It's, it's the plan. We're going to make it snappy. Our IPA, beautiful little fool, our hibiscus saison, and then that first beer that we had today, the peaches of promise. Um, so we're bringing a couple kegs of each. Uh, we're going to have some free food for people that want to come hang out. Uh, we're going to be selling t-shirts. Um, and we've talked about giving away glassware for the first, like, 20 to 30 people oh, okay. that show up. Um, but we haven't really talked to the guys about that. And since we're doing the pint night, I don't know if they'd be, yeah. like, super down for us to do it. But also, come on, it's our launch party. Right, that right. That's what we want to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but we'll have, like, our t-shirts for sale. And yeah. we've got some new t-shirts. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be a fun night and we'll give like a couple speeches and talk about the farm and we're going to have some art of what our building is going to look like cool. um, in the future. So yeah, it'll be something really cool and informative. Awesome. Yeah. And that starts at 5 o'clock? Yes. Sure? It, I think we're going to start it at 5 and they kind of just gave us free reign of like how late we want to go. Okay. Um, so if it's bumping, we might go to like, oh, I don't know, 9 o'clock. Oh shit! On a weekend, yeah, <laughs> uh, so yeah, we might go to nine o'clock. No promises. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll be pretty tired. Yeah. 
Sure. <laughs> I don't remember if we talked about it on the show or not, but what festivals can people find you at? Are you going to be at Wild Brew? Yes, we will be at Wild Brew. Um, and we were really bummed that we weren't uh, able to do the Conservation on Tap this year or Hop Jam. We like got our licenses right after Hop Jam. Ah. Um, because that, that festival is just so much fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that was the first time that y'all had us. Yeah, probably. Say. It was. Because um, I remember seeing you guys. Yep. And, um, yeah, so... What we, part of the festival was it? How bad were we? You were good. Okay. You were good. Yeah, we were like kind of towards the front, so I think you guys are just getting started. Just checking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, y'all were good. Y'all were good. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, so we... We love those festivals. I really love Conservation on Tap. I don't know if you guys have... Did you guys have Absolutely, fun? yeah. That, that festival is so cool. I just love what they yeah. do at the zoo. Um, and so, yeah, we'll be at Wild Brew. Sweet. Um, and we want to do the High Gravity Festival. I know you guys did an episode with them mm-hmm. about that festival. We were really bummed we couldn't do that. And I told them, like, we just weren't licensed. And we didn't want to really do anything that could hinder us fully getting our license. I'm sure we could have done it and been fine. But, you know, better safe than sorry. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah, but yeah, the wild brew coming up. Cool. It's going to be exciting. Awesome. Have some good beers on top of that. Absolutely, look forward to it. So, where can people find you online? Social media, that kind of thing. Yeah, so we are on Facebook. I think it's like Facebook.com/slash Rapture Brewing, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, if you just search Rapture Brewing on right Facebook, on. you should find us. We have like our blue logo looks like this. Uh, and if you're listening, it looks like something that's blue and has a Simpsons-looking chick on it because she's yellow. Is that the inspiration? Uh, it's not, okay. but I, I just saw the duck hat. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. do love the Simpsons, but uh, but yeah. So we're on there, uh, Rapture Brewing, and on Instagram we're at Rapture Ales. Okay. Um, and we are a lot more active on Instagram than we are on Facebook. Yeah, same. Yeah. But you know, it's just so much easier to do pictures right and, you know and not really think about it right but, like facebook is trying to do this whole story thing but i feel like people don't really care about the facebook stories you just link them up yep. and let yeah. instagram push to facebook exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. but yeah so that's that's where you can find us and you can see pictures of beers that we're brewing activities we're doing on the farm porch is very famous he's a goat he's our rescue goat um and he's very lazy and just chills on the porch. That's his main porch. Unless so. he's opening doors, right? <laughs> yes, he knows how to open I'm shocked he hasn't opened the door. Yeah. Because like, he must not know that we are doing something in here. Yeah. Because he's just so needy nice. and wants to be with people. So I'm shocked he hasn't opened the door. Nice. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, is there anything else that you want to promote on the show, talk about on the show? I, I think that's basically it. Yeah, just uh, come see me at the Farmer's Market every Saturday. Um, I'll, I'll, I t- if I'm not going to be at the Farmer's Market, I'll post about it on social media. Um, but I, I'm typically there every Saturday. So come buy some cans um, and go try us on tap. And if you're at a bar that doesn't have us, say, why don't you have Rapture Brewing on tap? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and then we do self-distro, so just have them hit us up, and we will deliver a cake that day. Nice. Awesome. Thanks again for having us out. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming. Absolutely. Hey guys, don't let the door hit in the vagina on the way out. (laughs) That was hilarious. You've just listened to another round of Pub Talk. Thanks again to Mitch from Rapture Brewing for having us out at the farm today. Make sure you drop a like and follow them on social media. Pay a visit to see them at the Farmer's Market in Tulsa. And don't forget to ask your favorite local restaurant about getting their beer on tap. You won't regret it. If you like what you heard today, show us some love on social media at Pup Talk Podcast. And to continue getting alerts every time we drop an episode, don't forget to hit that subscribe button on your favorite podcast app like Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can also find out all you've ever wanted to know about the show and more by heading over to our website, pubtalkpodcast.com. And remember, folks, there's never anything too big or hard in life that you can't handle it over a few beers with your good friends. So until next time, just chill to the next episode.